The new DCU, DC Universe, has officially started with its first entry, Blue Beetle. What are my thoughts in the film? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name's Drew and welcome to another review video on Flying Vina. Now the first thing you may notice if you're regular, which I hope you are, is that the background behind me looks very, very different, very weird. Uh, I can assure you this is not how it's uh, going to be. It's a work in progress. I recently got an electric desk, so I'm changing how this all was. It used to be a corner unit, now it's just, you know, a flat desk up against the wall. So I'm trying to figure out which setup I want. I still need to, you know, I've changed the shelves. That's still a work in progress. I'm still figuring out what I want to put on the shelves. There are definitely going to be displays on the wall. But I don't know yet if I want a full frontal, you know, view of the desk or whether I want to stick to the corner. Not sure yet. Anyway, it's a work in progress, so for the next few videos, it may seem a bit like this, particularly at least the very next video, because I'm filming one right after this one. So stick with me, bear with me. If you don't like the setup, don't worry, it's definitely going to change. <laughs> Also, I realised just before I started recording that I'm wearing a t-shirt that says tequila. Now, this is not a kind of joke on, oh, this film is based on, uh, not based on, it's centred on a Mexican family, so I'd better put on the one Mexican thing I have or so. It's totally not, it's a pure coincidence, but I mean, as a side note, I love tequila, <laughs> if it's a good one, you know, unfortunately. In Vienna, at least, if you go to, to, to nightclubs or something and you order a tequila, they'll give you really horrible, cheap stuff. I know and I'm aware and love when you get more expensive tequila, more quality is in it and it tastes a lot better. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the road so this is not me trying to be funny or anything, pure coincidence. Anyway, right, <laughs> now with that out of the way, the DCU, now if you, if you don't know this, which I totally get because not many people follow everything on the internet around comic book films and franchises and all these things, if you weren't aware, the DCU, the DC Extended Universe, uh, is basically, it has ended, not quite sure if the upcoming Aquaman 2 is still part of it, it's a bit of a weird thing, you know, how are they going to continue with this, but with the new leadership at DC Movies, with uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran, we now have Blue Beetle as officially, at least that's what they said months back when they introduced their plan, uh, that this is the first entry in the DCU. And I feel that is very, very fitting. I was really looking forward to this because I don't really know Blue Beetle. Uh, I mean, it was a name I was aware of, yes, but uh, I didn't, you know, haven't read any comics, uh, either, you know, with him as a main character or any comics that involved him. Knew nothing at all, but I know that, you know, it sounded interesting, it looked fun. I was like, of course I'm going to support it because I support comic book films, and in particular DC. So, yeah. Let's jump into it. Uh, what is it about? The story is focused on a character named Jaime Reyes. Any pronunciation in this video that's wrong, please do tell me about it in the comments because I do want to improve it. Uh, I do generally like Spanish as a language, you know, I love how Spanish sounds, but that doesn't mean that I'm able to do it. <laughs> so please do correct me because I do want to get it right. Anyway, uh, Jaime Reyes, he is played by, and again, <laughs> apologies, uh, Sholo Maridueña. I hope that's, uh, that's how you say it. Uh, I did some research, but yes, if it's wrong, please correct me. Uh, he is a student, he's just come back, he's graduated from, from uh, at the college and he comes back to his family in Palmyra City, which I believe is, is made up, it's not real. And yeah, uh, so he's looking for a job, you know, he's, he's trying to help out the family because they're having hard times financially and the rent's been put up, etc. Very relatable right now, you know, with things like inflation going on uh, pretty much everywhere and house prices and all this. Very, very relatable. And he stumbles uh, upon upon uh, a lady played by Bruna Marquezine, uh, who is in this, this big industry, it's called Cord. Uh, it's, you know, think of, I don't know, Oscorp for Spider-Man or LexCorp, you know, for, for, for uh, Lex Luthers. For, you know, it's along those lines, a big industry thing. Uh, that military, because usually it is in comic book films. Uh, he meets her, she is, she is the daughter uh, of, of, the, uh, of the head of the company. Uh, she is played by Susan Sarandon. Anyway, and, and she stumbles upon this blue beetle. She gives it to him for safekeeping and it suddenly starts <laughs> melding with him. And then suddenly there's this symbiotic relationship of this blue beetle being ingrained into his very being. And you can imagine it's kind of like a mixture of 
Iron Man and Venom. So he's got, I mean, you'll have seen the promotional material. He's front and center on everything of it. You know, he's got this suit, it's a blue suit with these, with these sort of uh, uh, mandibles, not mandibles, sorry, uh, these, these arms coming up. Mandibles. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but the thing is, it's symbiotic, so it's actually alive. So it's like, you know, he's got, he's got Iron Man's Jarvis, basically, but it's a living being that actually, you know, helps and works with him. So that's what it's basically about. And uh, this company had this blue beetle because they were trying to siphon off the power to construct their own sort of high-tech, uh, well, yes, uh, soldier suits, you could call them. They call them OMAX, which is a, <laughs> a term that is, is, is very widely known in DC Comics. So that's basically what it's about. He's been just thrust into this. Uh, he's become a superhero, although he didn't want to be. No one asked him whether he wanted to be. And yeah, we've got uh, the standard story of the evil corporation, you know, trying to get this technology for themselves. And you've got the battle that goes on there. So... The story itself is very, very basic. There is nothing special there. I will say that the plot is very simple, but I feel that this is exactly what's right. Like I said, this is starting the new DCU, so it makes sense to me at least to have a very simple story. It feels a lot like, you know, like like these these, these very, very simple uh, entry films of whichever franchise. You know, it feels like the first Iron Man, very much so, because you've got a suit, you've got the technology, you know, somebody trying to harness it for evil purposes, fighting against that. Yeah. Uh, so it feels very much like that. I feel that it works really, really well. So again, while it's a very basic story, it's not about that. It's, it's nice. It reminds us, you know, that we don't need these hugely connected universes or really complicated plots going on or huge dangers, etc. Keep it simple, you know, keep it simple. Well, yes, I enjoy the big crossover films, etc. as well. Maybe, and I hope this will be the approach, you know, DC, just, you know, focus on each franchise for itself. And if at some point you have a crossover, fine, but you don't have to, you know, connect every single bit to the big, large universe, you know. So I hope this is what they're going to do. The film was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a lot. So, and I don't mean it's, it's funny all the time. You've got all these jokes coming. Well, yes, there are a lot of funny bits in it. It's fun. I really mean fun. You know, it's just, it reminds you of, uh, at least for most people, I believe it will be like for me. Thinking back to, you know, you're a child, you want to be a superhero, and it's a lot of that kind of fun, you know, and you, you don't have to think a lot about, you know, consequences and other plot holes and this all this fit together and all these things, it just just go with it, you know, just go with it. They're, ha they're having fun with the concept, with the story, with the idea, just go along for that ride, it's just a perfect popcorn film in that sense, you know. It's not dumb, I don't mean by it that it's dumb, it's just fun, a lot of fun. A lot of it comes from the family, so you've got the, the Reyes family and it's all centered on them and they absolutely make the film work. Now I would imagine that, that if you're in the Latino community, surely you'll love that this film is coming out. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, like Black Panther was for the black community, you've got, you've got this for the Latino community. So I'm very happy for them, you know, to get this representation on screen. And I think it's great, it works really well because it's ingrained, you've got subtitles, you know, so in case you're somebody who you know, can't do subtitles, be warned, there are subtitles even in the cinema. <laughs> I don't mind at all, I watch them with subtitles all the time. It's great, it makes the whole thing, it, they, they just really feel like a family and it's done really, really well. So, you know, great script in that sense because you, you feel like you're part of this family and they go through a lot of hardships and tragedy, etc. and you're there with them and it just, it works really, really well. It's pulled off so amazingly. Love the whole the whole thing. You've got, uh, I suppose, another standout I should mention is George Lopez. He plays a sort of crazy uncle. <laughs> you know, he's into conspiracy theories, but at the same time, he's a tech wizard, which of course is used in this. Again, you know, it's something. Just just close your eyes to it. You know, just just go with it. I mean, it seems very silly, etc. It's like, oh well, what a coincidence. But who cares? Go with it. It's a lot of fun. You know, you're rewarded for it. <laughs> yeah, the whole the, the family dynamic, absolutely at the heart of this film, makes it all work. You've got cool action. The animation is absolutely fine. It is weird to think that that throughout the whole film, this film that only cost about half of what the Flash did, roughly a bit more than half, I think, has got much better animation. Really crazy to think. It just shows, you know, strip it all down, keep it simple, focus on a very simple story, and you're just going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really excited for this film and hopefully franchise, so I really do hope. Unfortunately the projections aren't amazing, so it's not going to make huge boatloads of money, but I do hope that they focus on what I can definitely see all across the internet, which is very positive reactions. You know, so those people who are going to the cinemas to see this film are coming out and they're having a great time, as did I. You know, I really like this film. 
I would highly recommend you watch it. If you want a very, very simple superhero film, you know, particularly if you like, like I say, if you are Mexican or in some way, you know, from a Spanish speaking country, I'm sure this will elevate your enjoyment even more than it did for me. Yeah, full recommendation. Excited to see what's coming in the DCU. Go and watch Blue Beetle. I loved it. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's the best DC film of all time, you know, uh, but I do feel like I kind of enjoyed it maybe a bit more than The Flash, I'm not sure, I mean I love The Flash for all the nostalgia and sort of the, you know, the large concept of what's going on etc, and it's hard to beat, you know, Michael Keaton's Batman, but as just a very, a first entry in, you know, a new franchise for an unknown character, really great, I loved it a lot. Okay, that will be all from me today, if you enjoyed this video please like, share and subscribe, it is the best way to enjoy this, to enjoy? <laughs> To support this uh, this channel, sorry, I'm a bit. I was thinking about something else there for a second. Anyway, it's the best way to support this channel. Leave a comment down below, like I say, about my horrible Spanish pronunciation. Please do correct me. I do want to improve. I do want to learn. But if you've got anything else to say about Blue Beetle, the new DCU, where do you think Aquaman will fit into this whole thing? Uh, anyway, anything you want to say down in the comments below. I'll thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one on Flying Dina. Take care. Bye.